The Finance Minister Malusi Kigaba is briefing the media after an urgent meeting with the PIC board. Let's go live to the proceedings. We are joined by the DG in the order of seniority. We are joined by the DG of the National Treasury, the chairperson of the board of the PIC, the CEO of the PIC, and members of the board who are flanking us here today. I called this meeting in my capacity as the shareholder of the PIC in light of the recent articles which have um, been doing the rounds, um, the last of which came out on Sunday <coughs> attributed to the CEO. I asked the CEO, why has he thrown me under the bus? <laughs> no, no. We, we discussed the, 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 I asked a few questions from the board. Because arising from these allegations, there's a number of issues which obviously need to be clarified. And it was important for me, in the interest of the pension holders, whose assets are being held by the PIC to get answers to those questions so that we can allay the fears and the damage that these articles would obviously have caused. The, one of the questions was, is it true that there are board members who are out to capture the PIC and does the board or are board members aware of those and can they indicate to me who those board members are? I wanted to find out from the board if it is true also that there are attempts to get rid of the CEO in a nefarious attempt to have him replaced by somebody that whose name has been branded about in the media. I thirdly wanted to find out if it is true that there has been a hundred billion rent requested from the PIC in order to fund so-called ailing state-owned companies and whether in light of the recent article it is true that there are people who are out to get the CEO and, and, and who those people are, whether the board is aware of these and what actions the board is taking in relation to those matters. I also asked the board to, uh, to clarify me on the allegations which have also been made in the media against the CEO and what it is doing with regard to those allegations. I made it very clear to the board that I personally have not attempted in any possible way to get myself involved in the, businesses, in the business of the PIC except through formal regulated channels which are available between us. I indicated to the board that, to my knowledge, and the Director General will speak to that, as well as the CEO, there is no 100 billion rand that we have requested from the PIC. The Director General will address himself to the various, various funding options that we are considering we insofar as South African Airways is concerned, how the PIC features into that, what discussions have taken place between the PIC and ourselves and where those discussions are at the present moment. The chairperson of the board of the PIC will speak to some of these issues which have been made in the media, which involve the PIC. I must say that I've taken a very dim view to these articles and how my name gets dragged into issues about which I have no knowledge, in which I am not involved, but issues which obviously would undermine 
if they were to be true, corporate governance at the PIC. It is important at all times that we act in the best interests of the pension holders to protect their assets, as well as in the best interests of the PIC, the National Treasury, as well as government as a whole. We have been engaging over the recent years ratings agencies, investors, and other stakeholders on the need to manage corporate governance in state-owned entities and DFIs, as well as to ensure that the funding of state-owned companies, the funding model and the guarantee framework are changed in order for us to be able to address concerns about rising guarantee exposure, as well as the fact that we seem to be using, in some instances, government guarantees in order to fund inefficient operational expenditure. I maintain that view. I would want for us, going forward, to develop a funding framework that is going to address, through government guarantees, largely capital expenditure, in the instance where we have asked the relevant state-owned companies to expand their capital investments beyond what their balance sheet can afford. And to the extent that we cannot crowd in private investment, we use government guarantees in order to achieve that. It is much better and more productive and has a positive impact on the economy than if we used government guarantees to fund and finance operational expenditure. The issue of the funding of South African Airways um, is, is going to be addressed by the Director General of the National Treasury, Mr. Dondo. But it was important for me to nip all of these issues in the bud as they appear so that we can give the assurance to the holders of pensions that we are not going to be reckless with regard to their pensions and, and, and wreck their, their, their lifelong um, investments. It is a fact that the first time I heard of a special board meeting which was to be on the 15th of September I heard it from somebody who sent me a message asking me to intervene and stop that meeting. My response to him was that it was not within my power to do so, that such an act would undermine not only corporate governance, but it would undermine board members who have been appointed to run the affairs of the PIC, and that it was not therefore in my best interest to do that because in the first instance, I didn't know there was a special board meeting on the 15th. I didn't know what was the agenda of that special board meeting. I didn't know what time or where that special board meeting was taking place or who was attending it. And therefore, it seemed very odd to me, as I indicated to him, that such would then be requested of me, at which he informed me that it was to protect my credibility and my good name. And I said, but how would you protect my good name by, by undermining governance? Because the board is well capable of taking decisions that affect the affairs of the PIC. But all of that notwithstanding, it is my view that all of us in our work as government and those who work in state-owned companies will from time to time come under undue pressure from all sorts of people in pursuit of various agendas. It is our responsibility to take steps to ensure at all times that we observe co good corporate governance, that we act in a manner that at any given time enhances the good name of the institutions we are appointed to serve in and that we don't compromise that under any circumstances. 
you cannot be in a position to preclude anybody from sending you a text or even calling you. And all of the board members would say they have from time to time been called by people seeking this thing or that thing. But everything must be subjected to corporate governance. I, as the Minister of Finance, am not involved in the board of the PIC, and therefore if anybody wants to talk to the board of the, the PIC, please don't talk to me. And I will certainly not intervene or interfere in anybody's interest, even as I may f at times just convey a message that, hey, I got something like this. It is not with any intention that those things should be done as I'm conveying them. It is only so that the people involved are aware. And in, in my, where I sit, my first line of contact is the chairperson of the board where I will say, I got this information. It's none of my business how it is dealt with or whether it is dealt with at all. But I find it very extremely odd that I should receive the type of message I received on the 13th of September. I took a dim view and I was extremely upset by that type of communication. But that notwithstanding, I want to assure everybody, every South African, every pension holder that their pensions are safe. There is absolutely no attempt to dig into their pensions for reasons that are unscrupulous. I also want to deal with, to dispel another uh, untruth that I said at the COSATU CEC that uh, we need 100 billion rand in order to uh, fund ailing state-owned companies. There's absolutely no truth in that. What I said was that over the past 10 years, government had the budget, specifically I said the budget, has capitalized state-owned companies to the tune of 125 billion rand. And I said, it is not right that since then the guarantee framework has increased to 7.3% 7 7 of GDP and that we seem not to be getting to grip the, 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 the operational inefficiencies in state-owned companies and that this is something we were as at this present moment paying attention to, so that we are able to improve the performance of our state-owned companies. There's absolutely no doubt that we need to do more. We need to be more stringent in how our state-owned companies are being managed. And there is a need for us in cabinet as a whole to continue engaging with this challenge so that we improve the governance of our state-owned companies, their financial performance, as well as their development investments so that we are able to achieve the balance we seek between commercial viability of state-owned companies and the fulfillment of their development mandates. Having said all of what I have just said, I want to start by inviting the Director General to comment on the specific item of the engagements between the National Treasury and uh, the PIC in order to put on record the types of engagements that have taken place between us. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the media, colleagues. Uh, before, Minister, I directly address this issue. This issue. I think it's important to, to, to note, for us all to note, that the National Treasury has been says to the SAA matter for a while. It's been, it's been a few years in terms of addressing the funding challenges, addressing the management challenges, addressing issues of transformation in the, in the airline, and also addressing relationship that we have, that SAA has with the lenders. And that discussion and engagement is on an ongoing basis. I think it's important to note that. When we went to the, spending, I mean, the, the finance committee in parliament on the 17th of May, some um, members of parliament had information at the time that we had we are engaged with the PIC on funding matters. Our response, and my response in particular on the day, I indicated very clearly that yes, we are engaged with the PIC. We are looking at various options, and we are you know weighing all of the options 
available to us? What are those options? Obviously, at the time, it could have been, you know, you know can you expose yourself any further to, to an entity like the SAA, yes or no? At the same time, it should also be noted that the PIC was engaged with the SAA and there was a due diligence process that was ongoing at the time to assess and for PIC, I guess, to assess and satisfy itself that if it has to engage with SAA, it, it, it's obviously going to be on a on good basis and a good business proposition that they can get involved. And that the conversation continued. So we could not have denied the fact that SAA is in, time, in consultation or that we are engagements with, with, uh, with the PIC and looking at various options. It was clear that obviously the options available at the time did not work. But also what is important to note that as we are assessing options, one critical option, and all of you have picked it up in the media, in fact you raised it yourself because there was a CAP memo that, that got leaked, uh, you picked it up that there's telecom shares on offer and that uh, government was, wanted to, 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 to dispose of these this telecom assets at the time. And again the PIC was mentioned and other government entities. At the time, I must emphasize that as an option that we are looking at, government had taken a conscious decision that if we have to op look at the option of telecom as an option, we must make sure that the entity or the shares remain in the state. At the time, we knew, and I knew in particular, and that the, that's the conversation we had with the PIC, approaching the, the CEO and say, you have got, ex you, you own part of uh, telecom already, 8%. Are you prepared to increase your shareholding by buying some of government shares? The answer is yes. Um, but we knew at the time that they could not have exceeded 14 or 15 percent of shareholding in ESCOM. The amount available could have been far less than what we would have needed in order to fund SAA. So again, PIC is not investing in SAA. PIC is not buying SAA or PIC is not buying shareholding in SAA. But it was an option that we had looked at. If we have to dispose of telecom shares in a way that we thought it would make sense, can we get the money that we needed? At the time, the estimate was about 10 billion. The 1.8 billion that could have been made av available was not going to be enough. So that conversation is ongoing. It's not conclusive. What other options are there? Obviously, I can only talk on behalf of what we do in, go in government, what, what the mandate I'm getting from cabinet. Cabinet, for instance, has been engaged on various, in the last few months on three occasions, we are again going to cabinet tomorrow in discussing this, 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 this issue that's, that's of critical in nature. So I think it's important that, Minister, we put that in context for everyone to understand that at no point did I go or the Treasury went to Dr. Dan and say, can you please advance us 10 billion or 13 billion or any amount that Telcom needs in order to fund SAA. That has not happened. But however, what has happened, what has happened is engagements and for PIC to look at options and um, that will make it easy for, for us to have enough resources uh, to, to fill the gap that's clearly there in capitalizing SA further in addressing the, the uh, uh, funding issues that SA has. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. And uh, the Deputy Minister in his capacity as the Chair of the PIC will now address the uh, the allegations that there are board members who are out to remove the CEO and, and, and um, without providing details will um, uh, indicate uh, what the board is doing to deal with those allegations. Uh, thank you. With the allegations which have been made against the CEO because it's important to put all of those issues into perspective. You could use this one. Oh. Thank, thank you, Minister. Um, good afternoon, um, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> um, perhaps picking up on, on what the DG was saying is that uh, uh, the, the, the PIC has got its own investment criteria. So different people and, and, and different companies with it will at different times approach PIC. But at all times, PIC will continue using its investment criteria to decide whether to invest or not to invest. I think that's, 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 that's very important. 
Secondly, an allegation is being made of some people who want to remove the CEO of PIC. I think this afternoon we had that a, a very robust discussion with National Treasury for to put my, my, my head of being a chair of PIC. But the board of directors of PIC, they reject that allegation with the contempt it deserves. Perhaps it's, it's important to note that the board of PIC has got about 13 members. And 10 of those board members were appointed by former ministers. Minister Malusi Kikaba, the current Minister of Finance, has only appointed three board members, which includes myself. There was a time when the minister had an opportunity to change the board when the term of five board members expired. But for, for continuity and governance and respecting the professionalism that is sought of those board members, he decided to reappoint those board members as board members of PIC. So somebody should tell me if this narrative of people who want to capture something, how do you capture an institution when you had an opportunity of removing five directors, you reappoint them? How do you do that? It defies logic, but people continue flighting that type of, a, of, of an argument. But ladies and gentlemen, I as the chairperson of, of PIC and the board members of PIC who are professionals in their own right, they reject that suggestion with the contempt it deserves. There's no basis. People just come up with those types of allegations without an obligation of providing an iota of evidence to that effect. During the minister's first engagement with our board and other boards of, 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 the, of the SOEs, one of the primary messages that he gave to the executives and the board members of the SOEs and the DFIs that we deal with. He said, we are politicians. We want to insulate you from the political noise, which in some instances becomes very toxic. And he said, we'd like you to, con to continue focusing on the work at hand. And that work has been taken by the executives of those SOEs, including PIC, very seriously. Coming to the board and the boards, or the board of PIC, the board of PIC continues to execute its fiduciary responsibilities with the diligence and seriousness that it deserves. In my interaction with those professionals in that board, I've never had an inkling of anybody who's at PIC for any other reason except to serve the people of South Africa and to serve PIC. I've never had that inkling. Again, a suggestion that would have received instructions from anybody, including the Minister of Finance, to do things which are uncooperative governance should be rejected because they continue being, being flighted again without any piece of evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, the directors of PIC, who are non-executive directors, and the two executive directors, they take their professional work very seriously. But talking about the non-executive directors of PIC, they are professionals in own rights, They've got their professions to take care of beyond the PIC. So they wouldn't like to be dragged into some toxic political environment which they've got nothing to do with. They understand their legal duties, their legal mandate. And that's what I found in, in, in that board. So perhaps just for the record, as PIC board of directors, we reject any suggestion that there is some thing which is being hashed somewhere to remove the CEO of PIC or any other executive. The minister in our interaction this afternoon, after reg registering his displeasure of him being drawn into the matters of the PIC, 
reiterated his confidence in this board and said, can the board matters be dealt with the board, by the board and nobody else, including the matter which has created a lot of interest, the matter of some allegations made against the CO. Yes, there were allegations which were made against the CO, which was not the first time, and the board had dealt with those issues in that way. A simple thing is that any South African should be assumed innocent until proven otherwise. And I think that's very important, especially for, the, for those of us who lived under apartheid, because we'll be presumed guilty until proven otherwise. And the fathers and mothers of our constitution made that very clear, that all South Africans are assumed innocent until proven guilty. And the board of PIC upholds that tenet of our constitution. But what happens is when, when the allegation comes, the board has got a duty to look into it. And that's what happened. What the board did was to afford the CEO of PIC an opportunity to respond to those allegations, which he did, and provided some documentation to support what he was saying. But as you know, that will involve a lot of documents and so on, and the board of PIC decided to take those, the response of the CEO to the internal audit of the PIC to verify everything that the CIO had said in the documentation and the fact that the, the CEO was saying that I followed all, uh, all the process, processes and procedures and policies of PIC. And that's the process that uh, the board of PIC went through. So we are waiting for the report from, the, from, from internal audit. It's not the first time that we have dealt with a similar matter. We have dealt with this, the two other matters before, and that's the process that we have, we have followed. So now we don't understand the halabalu. Why are people becoming so excited? Because the CEO has said, I are responding, we are waiting for that. It's good for the organization. It's good for the CEO himself. And it's good for the country and the pensioners that we, if there's any allegation that, is, that gets cleared. I don't know what the expectation was, was that the board receives an allegation and we sit on it. The next day would have been said, what did you do about that? So the board, in its right, decided on a particular cause, and uh, that's what they are doing. We think that's, that's, good. that's good for all of us. It's good for the CEO himself. It's good for the country. It's, for, it's good for the, uh, for the fund itself. So <clears throat> the, the other allegations and so on and so forth, we just think that it's just a jamboree that we as the directors of, of PIC don't want to be involved in. And we are confirming that we never received any instruction, either from the Minister of Finance or the Director General of Finance, to do anything which is against the policies of, uh, the, of, the, of the PIC. I think we should respect that. I think I'll end it to that, Minister, and thank you very much. Thank you. And I will ask the CEO <coughs> to address the uh, issues which have appeared um, in the media, uh, associated statements associated with him and the approach that he has taken on those issues. Thank you very much, Minister, Deputy Minister, DG, fellow directors of the PIC and the media. I think the article that appeared in the Sunday Time is uh, distasteful, distasteful, inaccurate, and I think it's designed to drive the wedge between myself and the minister. It's designed to drive the wedge between myself and my board. I formally complained to senior management at Times Media Group. We are weighing our legal options to try and deal with this matter properly. I must put it on record that I enjoy good support from the minister, good support from the deputy minister, 
I enjoy good support from the board of the PIC. And I can assure our clients that the PIC is on solid ground. We are not disturbed by this. We are focused on the work. And so they can rest assured that their monies are safe. I think, Minister, if I may, I would like to just explain the relationship between the PIC, its client, and most importantly, government as the shareholder. The PIC is owned by government, represented by the Minister of Finance as shareholder. And the minister has authority to appoint directors of the PIC as the shareholder of the PIC. The PIC's function is to manage assets of a number of government entities, the Government Employees Pension Fund, Unemployment Insurance Fund, Compensation Fund, etc. The client provides us with a mandate that spells out how we should manage our money. So we take instructions from the clients insofar as how their assets should be managed. It's also very important to point out that government underwrites most of these funds. And therefore, the minister has to sign off on any strategic asset allocation that they provide to the PIC as ensuring that he's happy with how those monies are going to be managed. And therefore, he then leaves the responsibility of implementing mandates to the board of the PIC. And I'm saying this to dispel this myth that we take instructions, investment instructions from National Treasury. We don't. And most importantly, the issue of 100 billion on the table, we have not been approached. We read it in the media. I think I should put that on record that we haven't been approached. And the DG has rightly said that insofar as SAA is concerned, there has been discussions and it's clarify the nature of the discussions. So I want to reassure the clients, the owners of the assets that PIC manages, that their money is safe. Thank you. Thank you. Just before we take questions, let me ask if there's any non-executive director who may want to make a statement. Thank you, Minister, Deputy Minister, DG, um, colleagues and members of the media. I think for some of us Sorry, as... maybe you can just introduce yourself, your name, so that they can mm -hmm. know who's speaking. Oh, the name is Sibu Zulu, a non-executive director at PIC. I have been for more than three years now, um, and... I think what is quite distressing for us is that for some of us, this was our very first interaction with the minister. Um, and I think I speak for the entire board. The minister, um, soon after he was appointed as the Minister of Finance, uh, took some time out and engaged with our executive. And we regarded that as a critical step in just dealing with whatever issues that could have unsettled um, ourselves as an institution. And one of the key things that was said at that meeting, which was also conveyed by the chairperson of the board, who's also the deputy minister, is that please stay out of politics we will insulate you, you do your work. And that is exactly what we've done. And we have focused 
on the mandate that we have been given by our client. There is a clear mandate that we get, and that's what the CEO was said, and so we do not make decisions willy-nilly. It is very difficult, I must say, and I'm sure I speak for all my colleagues here as non-executive directors, to interfere or intercept a board like the PIC, simply because our decisions cannot be contrary to what is our instructions that come from our clients. Now, what makes this also a bit unsettling for us is that when these issues come out to the media, the, in, the immediate red hearing for us is that what is our clients saying? We must now account to the government employees pension fund. And it's all well and good when you conceptualize these matters. But the reality is a GPF member is some retired nurse from Emma Sabatini who must now see in some newspaper that her money is basically at risk and stands a chance to be wasted by you know, the, the government. And the big question then becomes, what is the board doing? So those are the issues that really unsettle us as the board. We become more concerned about our clients. And we want to assure our clients right now, the GEPF, the UIF, the Compensation uh, 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 Commissioner, the Commission, that we have every intention to protect their funds. We have every intention to make wise investment decisions. We will continue following governance processes as we have in the past years. And we have every intention to continue with our open door policy where we interact with them, where we give reports to them, where if we are of the view that we should be investing in other areas, we engage with them. Another important point that I think we must make on behalf of the board is that we are very, very confident of our staff members. The PIC has got world-class employees. And when such things come up in the media, it also unsettles these professionals that we've employed. And they then get exposed or they start exploring options of leaving the PIC and joining the private sector. And then the argument will always go back to being the public sector does not have quality employees. And we can assure you, PIC employees are of quality, they are solid professionals, they are highly on demand, and we have full confidence in them. So on a daily basis, you, the public must be assured, and especially our clients, they need to be assured that we will make sure that their monies are well looked after. Thank you, Minister. Okay, thank you. Now, we, we will take questions uh, we and, and then uh, we will all answer. Um, so I think we will take them in tranches of maybe four or five. I will be chairing the session. There's a hand one, two, three, four, five. Let me let me take these five hands this side, and I will come. Let me start with the left wing, and then I will come to the right wing. Thanks, Minister. Karen Morn from ENCA. Obviously, you have this deadline um, for SAA having to repay these massive debts um, on the 30th of September. It's now the 26th of September. Um, do we have any sense of what is actually going to happen? Because it does seem like the sale of these telecom shares is going to, looks very likely to be a solution. Um, 
sh you know, short term. And of course, the criticism will be is that, in essentially, you're going to have to offload what are very good assets, solid parastatal assets, in order to bail out what is clearly a dysfunctional one. Um, so how do you respond to that? And there have been recent criticisms um, from the DA suggesting that you've been complicit in some kind of withholding of financial results of SAA in a bid to protect Ms. Mieni, if you can, ret if you can respond to that. And then, um, Dr. Majila, I just want to understand, you said the Sunday Times report was distasteful and designed to drive a wedge. Um, are you saying that what you are quoted as saying in that story, which was essentially that you were being targeted so that people could access PIC funds, is untrue? Um, are you saying that the Sunday Times have, have, have lied? Or what is, you, what is your version in terms of the quotes that are directly attributed to you? Um, and how, you know, obviously, um, what has happened has created a huge amount of uh, distress for, for, for um, pensioners and for the 1.2 million people that are served by the PIC. Do you take any responsibility for that? Thank you. Sorry, Minister, if I can just ask our colleagues to, as much as possible, have one question because we want to take as many as possible. We have some time limitations. Um, the CEO has to run, the minister has to run, so we want everyone to get a question and so can you just try if possible to limit it to one question uh, it's carol payton at business day um <clears throat> i i have sorry my several questions they're all linked and they all they all belong to the to the dg um can you explain do you have to so city bank said that they they were not going to roll over their, lo their loan do you have to pay them on the 30th of September? If so, where will you pay them from? Um, the previous standard and chartered loan, I believe, was paid from the National Revenue Fund. Is that what's going to happen? Is that effectively borrowing against the National Revenue Fund? And then can you also just explain the, the, the process of events with this SAA approach to the PIC? So there was this approach in May, which was for a loan, I understand. Was there then another approach later um, to, to warehouse or to buy the telecom shares. These are two separate approaches. And in the case of the, um, the, where, the, 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 the first one, the loan, if Dr. Majila could say um, you did due diligence on the, on the loan to, to SAA, um, what, what was your decision on giving a loan to SAA? Thanks. Thank you, Minister. It's Mariam Issa from Finweek. Um, in a way, my question is, is a follow-up to Carol's. Um, I was, wanted to ask about the ongoing discussions that the DG said were going on now between the PIC and SAA and the Treasury, and what type of money is, what amount of money is involved. And I think this is very important to dispel further speculation in the media about what's going on. from Reuters News. I just wanted to ask if uh, the minister, do you have an opinion on why this uh, attack on the PIC's credibility is cropping up at this particular moment? Thanks. Hello. Hi, Loni from Bloomberg. I just wanted to check, um, did you guys renegotiate the, the, the credit terms with the banks at SAA? I think it sort of relates to Carol's question, um, and also um, if we could maybe talk about uh, what is the funding gap at, at some of the other SOEs, such as um, the Nile and PetroSA, and what could be done to um, sort of plug those uh, funding gaps, if possible. Thanks. I'll ask uh, the DG to answer, then the CE will answer, uh, and uh, and then I will respond to the other questions. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Minister. You know that tradition, as most of you know, we don't, we don't, we don't talk to the media before the MTVPS, you know? So, uh, unfortunately, DM, we, 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 this matter that is the PIC matter brought this to the surface, but in any way, we'll deal with it. 
As you can imagine, most issues, most questions that were asked will be addressed in terms of the quantum, in, in the context of the medium term budget policy statement so that we address all these challenges as, 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 as one uh, composite response. The Minister of Finance in February indicated that there is a need to recapitalize SAA, there is a need to recapitalize South African Post Office. What the Minister of Finance did not do was to put the quantum. Why? Because, as I said earlier, it's an ongoing conversation in terms of looking at the issues and the management challenges and the financial uh, challenges uh, that are there and funding issues of SAA. So I'm saying that because it's important to understand that context. That as the process unfolded in, 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 going in discussions and engagements with SAA, and by the way, we meet them on a weekly basis. We have been doing the last, say, a year or two, uh, where SAA and ourselves engage, we talk, including, by the way, the lenders in the last year or so. All of them as one. We used to have weekly meetings. We, we moved that based on the conversations and the complexity of the issues as to the funding issues and challenges. You all know that uh, most of the loans were due on the 30th of June. They were moved. Some were rolled over to the 30th of September. And some, obviously, as I always said, that we are in conversation rolling some further. 30th of June, at the time, in fact, it started at the end of April. In April, we, we agreed with Standard Chartered that there's no way, they're not going to roll over, and that's why on the 30th of June, we gave Standard Chartered 2.2 billion in settle their debt. Yes, we, are in, we have been in consultation and discussion with Citibank. We owe Citibank about 1.8 billion. We, under, we had an understanding with them that uh, we'll, from February, by the way, including the others, that we will roll into June, and finally rolled to, to September. City did indicate to us that they are not, they will not be in a position to roll further, and we engaged them. We said, how much? Um, 1.8, can we engage further? Can it be, we, we've been negotiating. It's an ongoing consultation. These are management processes that the dynamics change on an ongoing basis, on a daily basis. So we, there is a number that we've agreed with Citibank as to, uh, what amount will we advance and what will be rolled over, how we'll be paying the difference, including, by the way, the others. How are we going to pay them? Because all of them are responsible lenders to SAA. They also have took into consideration that there's working capital that needs to be addressed. And we know, it's not a secret, in the corporate plan of SAA that was tabled before, um, there is an indication that SAA will for a while, whilst it's reinventing itself, whilst it's refocusing itself, whilst the long-term turnaround strategy is being implemented, that realization of profits will only come much later. The year that we have penciled in and that we all know about is financial year 1920. So the challenges, funding issues, including reinvigorating SAA, I'm using the word carefully because that's critical for SAA. We've got a new CEO coming on the first, of November, the board confirmed, and we want the CEO to start on a slate that will give him options to actually manage this airline back to profitability. That's our interest and that's our concern. So in terms of um, uh, uh, where we're gonna get the money from, we, 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 we are going to cabinet tomorrow, and I think it will be preempting what cabinet is going to decide on this matter. And we are going to cabinet with a package of these issues, by the way, that will tell cabinet and as I said earlier in my, in my earlier input, uh, I said we have had three already conversations with cabinet. Tomorrow it will be the fourth in a short space of time where every time we go back, report, uh, and, and, and actually given new, new areas uh, of, of, of focus, and we'll be doing that tomorrow. So in terms of how, when, where the money is going to come from, will we be getting it from the National Revenue Fund? It's something that I think we want cabinet to give us direction further tomorrow in terms of where you're gonna get the money from. Um, there's a question about ongoing discussion with SAA. I did ally, ally that, Miriam, in terms of the, 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 the you know, the, the, the Bain report, we, we commissioned the report, as you know, the Treasury some time ago. There is a report that suggested some numbers, five billion in 17, 18, another five billion in 18, 19, and another three billion in 1920. That's the number, five, five, three for the next, 
current financial year and the two outer years. There is a, as part of the conversation and discussion, noting and high, identifying the liquidity challenges, identifying the fact that loans are due and SAA doesn't have the liquidity, I mean the money to pay for this. We had to consolidate the five billions for the two financial years into one. And that's the 10 billion number that we've been, that we, we, we've been, uh, we are going to cabinet or we went to cabinet on in terms of further engagement that currently when we take, because remember we have to regularize the standard chartered. It might have been a cash flow matter at the time, on the, which it was by the way. We had 2.2 three, three, uh, billion in our bank account on the day. We paid that. Why did we do that? I think we're acting, we're acting responsibly as a government. I think what we're doing also, we did not, and I don't think we should allow it. We shouldn't allow any state-owned company to default, and that's the decision we took in order for them to meet their obligations. Because remember, if any of these companies, state-owned companies default, if SAA is to default on its obligation, then there's a call on cross-default across, across the, you know, the guarantees that we have. And that might be a huge, uh, uh, it has got very huge, big, huge implications. So we, 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 we acted responsibly, and we will act responsibly again come 30th of September, which is in a few days' time. And I think we'll get further direction from Cabinet and further details we'll have to regularize in the MTVPS uh, in order for us to, to, to be on a, on a good footing. Now, in terms of funding gaps of SOCs, look, I think the, 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 let's not bring other SOEs now on board. And, and I, think, I think let's focus on the matters at hand. With due respect, the last question from, my, you know, from Bloomberg, I think, look, you, you know the issues. You, you, you know that state-owned companies in them, and we, we've acknowledged that, by the way, up front. There are challenges that I think we have to deal with, whether from a funding point of view, from a financial management point of view, or from a governance point of view. So let's not bring those here now today. I think maybe at the later stage, or maybe just be patient enough to wait until after the MTPS, I guess. Thanks, Minister. I think I've answered all. Oh, look, there, there's been many approaches. Why I'm saying that? Because me and Dr. Dan and Matsepo in the PIC engage often on this matter and many other matters. We are one family of, of, of entities, all under the Minister of Finance, we engage all the time. So if I'm stuck and I'm saying, Dr. Dan, I'm just, I was just recently appointed, 8th of June, I'm confused, can you help me out here? There's SAA, which needs funding challenges. What are the options in the PIC available? Let me come back to you after two days. He develops a paper that he can talk me through. That's the engagement. The concrete engagement was that when SAA on its own approached the PIC, and that's where the due diligence process came on board. Yes, there was that conversation, which clearly then we could not explore any further, and Dr. Den will explain. The second concrete was the telecom option where government took a conscious decision that as much as we want to dispose of or we've got an option or treasury or myself or anybody recommends that we've got core assets, core or non-core, you can determine what you, but insofar as I'm concerned for the purpose of today, there are assets in government in the form of telecom. Good performing assets, you are right. And here it's not an issue of taking one asset that performing. We haven't, no one has decided that. So all I'm asking and I'm appealing to all of you is that in some cases, give us an opportunity to manage and to explore all our options. Because as we are busy doing that and some memo leaks or someone comes up and say, we heard you are distracting a process what essentially should be a clean, clear process in terms of identifying options that will finally have to take to a process in government First, it will be to the minister, secondly, to cabinet to explore. So yes, as part of the options and discussions between us and Dr. Den, this, us, Dr. Den and the telecom involved and other government players, there was a need that says telecom uh, has got, the government has got shareholding in telecom. If we have di disposed of that, PIC may want to play as, contribute and play in that space increase their shareholding from 8% to some percentage. 
And, and again, that's ongoing. It couldn't, it couldn't be delivered because three days from now we have to, we have to pay. So I'm, I'm not closing myself out to engaging with that option. And by the way, something that you don't ask, let me answer up front. In the leaked memo, someone was saying, we, went to, we are going to go for a special appropriation bill. Now it tells you, as we are busy engaging, exercising options that we have, then we are distracted. You can ask, what happened to the special appropriation bill? My simple answer is that, no, sorry. These are options that we are looking at. We are looking at various options available at our disposal. Come two days' time, we might come with another cat out of the bag in terms of what options are available to us. So I think majority, I mean, most of the details obviously will be finalized and presented to you at the MTBPS. So I think we should exercise patience that the SAA matter is what it is. They have liquidity challenges, the issues of lenders who are responsible, who some of them, by the way, will be prepared to extend beyond 30th of September. And again, it would be premature for me to tell you which ones, what amount, what are we paying on the 30th. Let's be given an opportunity that the window of opportunity that we have to engage with the lenders as we do on an ongoing basis so that we, we come out clear and clean and clear, and I'm using these words again carefully, clean and clear on the 30th, I mean on the 25th of October. So, Minister, I take this matter is, is now clear from, from when the questions were coming from on, on SAA and its funding and challenges and moving forward. Thanks. I think on the issue of the article, uh, let me also, like the DG, ask for patience. We, we are going to issue a statement tomorrow. I'm talking to the Times Media Group uh, uh, management to deal with this matter. So we will, we will issue a statement tomorrow. I think insofar as uh, uh, Telecom is concerned, uh, the DG, I think, has made, you know, a, a clear explanation around our discussions. Uh, we did a DD on SAA, and uh, the outcome was not favorable, you know, in terms of the minimum requirements of our client mandates. And uh, we are engaging with them on what we believe they should fix. There's a turnaround plan that they are implementing as we speak. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a process that will take some time to get them to a point where they can become an investment grade, in which case we'll be able to put money. We are not closing them out at all. I think it's very important to understand the role that the PIC has played throughout this year in supporting state-owned entities so that they are able to contribute to the economy. And we still believe that once all the issues around governance and so on are, are fixed, they will be able to contribute again to the economy and they will become an, ex an extremely important partnership in rolling out of our investment strategy. Thanks. Thank you. Now, the question was, two questions. One was, um, am I withholding the annual financial statements of SAA? Unfortunately, I don't audit SAA. Um, I, I therefore have no power over the annual financial statements. Even at the AGM, my job as the shareholder is to note the annual financial statements, not even to approve them, because I don't run the company, so I have no uh, authority to approve them. I note the annual financial statements, but no, I'm not. In actual fact, the, the company has requested on several times, this, they requested a, a postponement of the AGM, given that the a, a, annual financial statements are not finalized. There are concerns by the AG uh, with regard to the going concern status of the airline. Uh, now, given that we are trying to assist the airline working, uh, working around the clock 
to assist with the capitalization of the airline to which will address those concerns. I had issued a directive that I would rather want the AGM nonetheless to take place earlier. I have directed that there, there be a board evaluation report um, and other, other uh, the audit of the skills uh, on the board of SAA and I have um, convened a special meeting with the, with the board to address some of those issues. So the, from the point of view of the shareholder, we have uh, been interacting with the, uh, with, the, with the board of SAA and the airline to bring the, the AGM forward. And a lot depends really on the finalization of the uh, recapitalization uh, strategy. And um, once that is done and the AG can sign off on the AFS, then we can uh, proceed to convene the AGM. But certainly, no, it's not me withholding the, the annual financial statements. I'm not an auditor um, of, the, of the airline. Um, and, and I think I have expressed my views on several occasions with regard to uh, the, the board of SAA. Um, there, there is a standing cabinet decision in that regard, and that uh, cabinet decision will be respected uh, by me. Uh, and, and so there, there, there is no conflict in that regard. With regard to whether there is an attack on the PIC credibility. Uh, you know, I, I don't think, w once we put it like that, we, we make it sound as if it's a concerted campaign. Uh, it, it could be an, an isolated um, incident, you know, with a few issues uh, popping up that we needed to nip in the bud as quickly as possible and to, to show a united face as these critical stakeholders, because the CEO was worried that, um, well, I was upset, maybe to start with myself. I was upset from the day I received a WhatsApp text on the 13th of September, right up to last Sunday, uh, that why am I being dragged into matters that involve the board, and yet I am not a member of the board. I don't sit on the board. There are procedures through which the board <clears throat> will report to me as the shareholder minister, and therefore, why am I being dragged and asked to intervene to stop a special meeting of the board, which I did not know anything about? So I was upset from my side, from the side of the chairperson of the board and members of the board, they were also concerned about these issues. The CEO was concerned about what seemed to be um, articles that will impair the credibility of the corporation. And that would cause anxiety amongst the pension holders. And so it was necessary for all, all of us to come together and, 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 and um, assure the pension holders that they shouldn't fear for their assets. There is absolutely no truth to the allegations that um, there, there, there is a, a looting campaign out there that uh, seeks to dip dirty hands into the 1.9 trillion rand of uh, the PIC. But we also want to focus on addressing some of the challenges which we, we have seen um, so that we, we can be able to deal with these issues going forward. Um, from time to time, people will try, as I said in my opening, to uh, subject all of us to undue pressure to take decisions which favor them. Our responsibility is always to act together, guided by the principles of corporate governance, to, to allay and fend off 
such people and allay the concerns and fears. Board members have a have professional credibility to maintain. Uh, together, collectively, we have uh, to maintain the credibility of the institutions we serve. And, and so it, it's necessary that we should, we, 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 we may have uh, overreacted, but it was a necessary overreaction if, if anybody deems it like that. But from where I see it, um, it was not an overreaction on our part. We needed to act in the way we have to address these concerns and to send a message to anybody that should they try to drive a wedge among us, we will sit down and talk and talk about them um, and, 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 and address the issues which they are trying to, um, to achieve. But nobody is going to achieve um, those um, uh, uh, nefarious um, objectives. The, all of the things that people will try and throw at us, uh, ultimately the truth will stand out to disprove the, the, the lies, the distortions and allegations. So if there is a consistent pattern of attack on the credibility of the, PI, of the PIC, we, we, we will um, continue to act together to fend it off. Um, but maybe at the moment it was just a, a few incidents that came together and, and necessitated that we should react the way we did. Uh, but we, we are not thinking as yet that there is a concerted campaign to attack the credibility of the PIC. Let me take the right wing now. Well, right always depends. There are four hands at the back. Okay, five. <laughs> no, that can't be my right. <laughs> Let me take, I'll start with you. We will move right up to the front, yes. Uh, Justin Brown from City Press. Just wanted to ask you, Minister, who was the person that contacted you on September 13 that you didn't enjoy being contacted by? And then I wanted to find out, um, regarding SAA, how much money is due on the 30th? That's the Saturday. And how much must you pay? How much of those banks have not, se not, allowed, not have said they won't roll them in? Thank you very much. I'm Lenny Donnelly from the Mail and Guardian. This is for um, uh, Dr. Matila, I guess. Um, I would like to understand, in terms of your investment mandate as it stands, um, can you take up the entire shareholding of telecom that government owns? Um, or do you leave yourself too exposed to one company if you do? Um, and is there any engagement currently on the change to the mandate in that respect um, to try and allow you to take up more of telecom? Um, and then I just want some clarity on the SAA approach to the PIC on what I assume is a loan when you said you had to do your due diligence. Um, so I'm, please can you clarify for me. SAA approached you without Treasury approval or without Treasury accompanying them applying for a loan. If you could just say whether in fact that was the case and whether it was with Treasury alongside them. I mean, Akram, SABC News. I just, this PIC and basically uh, the pension has been a story that has been ongoing for a very long time. We also have reports where you have your teachers and your nurses and the policemen. Some of them have been taking out their money, um, you, know, you know, they have been retiring, wanting to take their money out. Could you just perhaps uh, reassure South Africans who've invest, you know, whose money is there, government workers whose money is there, that you are not going to touch that money. Just give reassurance to these people whose money is there, including, I'm sure some of, I'm not sure if some of you, your money is there, but just to give them reassurance that you're not going to touch this money moving forward. Good afternoon, Ministers. Warren Thompson from MoneyWeb. I just wanted to get absolute clarity on Dr. Dan Majila's status at the moment. 
You, first of all, uh, and these, these questions are probably directed to uh, Minister Butelezi and, and then the doctor himself. Allegations were made against Dr. Majile, who's the CEO. Uh, where did those allegations emanate from? Uh, was it an employee of the PIC, or was it a board member of the PIC, or was it someone outside of the PIC? And then just on his status, uh, you mentioned uh, he had to verify uh, his answers uh, in re response to those allegations had to be verified by uh, the, t the internal audit team at the PIC. Uh, is that, uh, so his, his tenure as CEO is subject to those uh, facts being verified to whose satisfaction? I'd imagine it's the board's satisfaction. Um, and when will, those, uh, when will the findings of that internal audit uh, be represented? And, and then just a last question related to that. The attack on Mr. Majila uh, by this person or group of persons is an attack on the credibility of the PIC itself. So if those allegations turn out to be baseless, surely the PIC must, and uh, perhaps Dr. Dan in his personal capacity, uh, exercise his legal options to um, deal with that allegation because uh, I think the, the role of the CEO is very important and as we've seen there's been a lot of distress around the fact that he, uh, he, his, uh, his tenure was being questioned by the board. So if you could just uh, clarify that for me as well. Thank you. My name is Konati. I'm with the Financial Mail and Business Day. I have questions uh, uh, for the minister, deputy minister, and indeed the chief executive. I'll start with you, Dr. Machila. I, we will give you all the time, sir, to issue your statement tomorrow, but please help us with the facts here. One, you said you are engaging with the management of the Sunday Times. Are you engaging with the journalist that wrote the story? Two, can you take us all into your confidence? Uh, there were about 900 words written in that story. What part of that story is inaccurate and malicious and intending to drive a wedge? You, you've just uh, repeated what you said about SAA or what you are quoted in that story as having said about South African Airways. Are you willing to repeat or state a different view about ESCOM? You said you would not invest in ESCOM as the PIC. What, uh, on another question, how long is your, what is your contract in your position at the PIC? When does it expire? If it does expire, uh, well, would you like to extend that, con uh, that contract? Do you have confidence in the leadership in this board that uh, now handles you? Mr. Gigaba, please bear with me, sir. We waited for an hour and 30 minutes for the meeting to start for, for the briefing. So yes, I understand you are pressed, but uh, we, we also gave up a lot of things to come here. With respect, sir, we waited for an hour for the meeting to start, as you had promised. With, uh, with respect also, um, do be considerate of other people's um, uh, situations. We, we understand you've got um, a lot of questions to, answer, to ask, but also do be considerate of other people's... Uh, th thank you, sir. I will. And I started by being here uh, at the time of the briefing. <coughs> Mr. Machila... Do you have faith in the leadership of the organization? I'm talking about the board that leads you, that you report to. Uh, for you, Mr. Kigaba, indeed, uh, the question has been asked about that person who sent you a text message. I, I would like an answer to that too. And why was that person so interested in protecting your integrity as to invite you to intervene? in matters you should not be intervening in. And do you have any confidence in Dan Machila as CEO of the PIC? And when his contract expires, would you be prepared to renew it? Uh, you, you said you want deep, uh, the, the, the treasurer want deep into the pensions for, for, any, for unscrupulous purposes. Does that mean there are purposes for which you would go into the PIC's funds, what are those? And, and last question for you, sir. Would you be looking to change the mandate, the investment mandate of the PIC, so as to not 
uh, so as to get rid of the limitations Dr. Machila was talking about when it comes to entities being uh, investment grade for which to in, in which to invest, uh, looking to, to change at all or not the mandate. Dr. Mach uh, uh, Mr. Butelis. You said last questions. Huh? I said last question to Mr. Kikaba. I said I've got three questions for all of them. Okay. And, and I know, sir, you are pressed for time, but we were also pressed for time when we got here, too. We communicated that to you, please. Thank you. Mr. Butelis, do you have any confidence in the leadership of the, in the management of the Public Investment Corporation as led by Daniel Machila? And when his contract does expire, would you be looking to extend that contract as chairman of the board? And what was the intention of the audit, of the internal audit review exactly after you've said you've got full confidence in the CEO? Surely you start by investigating and then express confidence? Thank you. Minister, can I make a suggestion that that's the last round of questions so that your the, the AG meeting you have is not deeply delayed. So can I just make that suggestion to you? Let, let me start with the easy one, <laughs> you know. My contract, I still have two and a half years to go, so two and a half years, it's a long time. You know, I'm sure we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. On the... Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Just, just allow him to answer. We no, also man. allowed you to ask your questions. I've, I've pointed out that uh, the, the PIC has been probably the biggest investor in, in state-owned entities. And uh, we pride ourselves to have kept the lights on. We've built roads, dams, etc., etc. And I think we will continue to do so on condition that all the issues within state-owned entities are resolved and they are able to meet the minimum investment criteria that the client has prescribed to us. On the issue of the article and the allegations, uh, I'm still saying, pleading with you to be patient. Thanks. I've enjoyed the support of the board. The PIC is where it is today as we speak and making a difference and contributing quite significantly to transformation, to good returns that the clients are enjoying because of the board that you see around here. I still have confidence, lots of confidence in them. And I believe together we'll be able to make a difference, deal with the sluggish growth in the economy. We have plans to do that, to intervene, to make sure that we put the country back on the growing path. I still enjoy their support and I have confidence in them. I think that exhausts the questions that were directed to me, Minister. Yes. Thank you, Minister. The approach... Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry. I, I didn't answer all the questions here. No. The approach by SAA, I think the question was, was it with Treasury or not? We get approached all the time by the state-owned entities that we have invested before and those that require money directly without National Treasury. 
we have invested in bonds of some of the state-owned entities that are not guaranteed by government for that matter because of the financial standing and financial management and governance that we see there. So they approach us without treasury and it's not abnormal for them to do so. The issue of buying the whole of telecom com shares, I, I, I must point out that uh, telecom is uh, it's a, in, my, in our view, a good asset, well managed, we like it. That's why if there's a seller out there, we will participate to an extent that it satisfies the mandate requirements. Uh, we have parameters. We may not be able to take the full stake because of those parameters that the client have set for us. So let me leave it there. You know, it's an investment decision that we'll make at the point when we are approached. I think I have socks. Um, can, can I start with the question of uh, in, in PIC investing in state-owned state companies? I, I think the, 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 the approach of PIC on, this, on those matters that we deal with each matter uh, on its own and look at its merits and de demerits. The very fact that today we are, we are talking about a, a telecom share and the possibility of PI as saying, let me start by saying that telecom is a good investment. Um, PIC participated at, 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 at that level. <clears throat> PIC is also a shareholder of, 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 of AXA. PIC uh, uh, participated in, 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 in the land bank, and I'm happy to, to, to report that today we're at the AGM at, at, at the land bank, and the land bank uh, uh, registered a profit of about plus minus 300 million rands. <clears throat> So there can't be a blanket approach on all SOCs. The, the PIC would look at its uh, investment mandate, do its work and see whether um, <clears throat> the criteria that it uses is being met by, uh, by, 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 by an SOC and take, and, and take a view. So there can't be a, a view like um, uh, the DG and uh, the, the CEO said that they looked at, at SAA at that time and uh, uh, they, were not, they were not happy what, with what they saw, and they decided not to invest. So it shouldn't be expected that there's going to be a blanket, a blanket ban or blanket approach, whether you participate or you do not uh, um, uh, 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 participate. <coughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I hear... Um, a question as to whether will be will will be extending. Let me say extending the appointment of. In fact, you didn't say we. You asked me whether I'll be uh, willing to extend. I don't make decisions. The, the, the of, of PIC, the chairman of PIC doesn't have a special decision. It's 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 it's, it's a it's a board decision. And then the board will apply its mind when it comes to that. So let's not let's let's not jump the gun. But perhaps this this uh, uh, a related question: Do I have confidence uh, in 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 the persona of 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 this of the CEO of PIC? I think I've I've answered that one many many times. I've said I've got absolute confidence to this to to the CEO of 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 of, of, of PIC. Then the, this this the status of what we are doing with the, with the allegations. Surely, ladies and gentlemen, you agree with me that if there's anything which is being raised about me, the board and, 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 and the minister have a, a duty to look into that and investigate to his or to its satisfaction. I would love that to happen with me because it, it, would, it, would, it would clear my name once, one, once and for all. <clears throat> so the process that we are, we are busy with is the, is the process which the board defined for itself, which will end once uh, the, uh, let me say, the board, once it, it receives the, re the report from in the internal audit, 
we'll look at it, at it and then we'll, we'll, we'll communicate it to the people of South Africa as to what we make out of it and what decision the board makes. But it's very important because this, this touches on many other things as if the chairman has got some special, uh, uh, um, some special voting power. I don't have any special voting, voting power. Um, the only different difference that is there between me and the other non-executive directors is that I chair those, those, those board meetings. And as you heard the non-executive directors speaking, they exercise their minds and come to what they think is the, to the best interest of the company. When, when uh, the CO's term expires, the board again will apply, will apply its, 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 its mind and, take, and come to a particular determination around there. So let's not, let's not jump uh, uh, the, 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 the gun. For, for, for me, um, it, it's a pity. I think the opportunity cost of us sitting here and all of us sitting here and uh, talking about these allegations, we must, we must call the press conference, all of you must come here and so on, are very, are very high. Because as we said, that there have been similar situations before and they have been dealt with in a, in a, in a, in a, in a particular way. And at all times, the board has, has acted responsibly and to the best interest of the, of, the, of the pensioners. The board has never been reckless in its approach on all these things. But I'm sure that the inverse will also be, be reckless if the board were to receive any type of, 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 of an allegation against the CEO and just decides to sit without satisfying itself about the veracity and the truthfulness of the allegations which are being made. I think we owe that not not just to the board and to, and, and to the employees of, 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 of PIC, but we owe that to the pensioners and to the people of South Africa to make sure that we satisfy ourselves as the board to say we have looked into this, this, at, at this thing to our satisfaction. There was a question on the debt, I think from City Press. Well, yeah. 6.9 billion, but as I said, it's important to note the following, and I said in my earlier input that we are engaged with the lenders. So as much as 6.9 billion is due on paper, because we've been engaging, it might just be that we don't have to pay the 6.9 billion. So it's ongoing conversations, and it might just be that based on the latest, which I still have to find out, because there has been discussions over when we were all enjoying Heritage Day yesterday, consultations and continued. So you find that the number is much smaller. But however, the big quantum that I indicated that you will regularize or that we'll have to make good during the MTBPS is 10 billion, as I said. Yes, thank you. Finally, uh, I, I received a text from a number, uh, and uh, so I responded to it. I've not bothered to check whose number it was. Um, I thought it was one of the people who would, in the normal course of time, um, but it, it's, it's quite clear that it's somebody with um, good knowledge because he did warn me that my credibility would be affected. This thing was going to be in the media, and it did get to the media the following day. Um, do I have confidence in the CEO? Yeah, of course, without a shred of doubt. Uh, will I be extending his contract in two and a half years? I think I would be jumping the gun to answer that question. I'm sure Dr. Den would love to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but we must respect uh, a governance uh, uh, um, procedures. I will have to wait for the board. If I, again, if, if I just express myself on that matter without being guided by the board, then why have a board in the first instance if I'm just simply going to overrun them and uh, take such decisions? I will be guided by them. Are there any purposes for which we'll dip into PIC funds? I think I was specific. I wasn't saying that, oh no, for this reason you can do this, for another reason you cannot. I was saying that we will not dip into PIC funds. PIC investments, whether in state-owned companies or for any other reason, must be guided by the recommendations of their investment committee. I can't sit here. Let's respect corporate governance. I can't sit here and make a determination of such an extent 
And even if they took that decision, they don't need my authorization. I'm not a member of the board of the PIC. I don't sit here harboring a wish to influence their investment programs. My job is to outline the shareholder compact, which spells out exactly what I want the PIC to do. And at the AGM, I spell out my objectives to them. Those objectives don't get into operations. They remain broad and strategic to allow them, in the course of the conduct of their work, to decide how they are going to structure the operations in line with my uh, strategic framework, which I present uh, in the form of the shareholder compact. I have said very clearly to the PIC that, among other things which they do, there are three things that I would like them to do. One is to pay very close attention to transformation and how the PIC plays that role in the economic sphere. Among others, I have specifically outlined to them the need to increase the funding which is allocated to black asset managers. Black asset managers in South Africa remain very much um, underfunded. And, and there is a need for us to assist in growing uh, the assets under their management as a way of effecting transformation. I am unflinching in that regard. I would like the PIC to present a very concrete plan in that regard. The second area of transformation relates to the acquisition of professional services. The audit, legal, and other professional services. I would like to see the PIC utilizing more and more black professionals, women professionals, young professionals, and assisting us to grow an asset base of, of, of black professional services. And I've said to the PIC, I would like to see them continuing to increase their infrastructure-related investments. Infrastructure development, needless to say, is an important driver for growth productivity in the economy, for localization, for industrialization. And I want the PIC, both in relation to its own suppliers and customers, to continue to spearhead the agenda of transformation. Government has got to do more with regard to championing the transformation agenda. And I think that the PIC has to play that role, not only limit themselves uh, to investments and then um, keep quiet with regard to transformation. Where PIC resources have been invested, I am demanding greater advocacy for transformation and, and I hope that in the coming weeks and months we will see that increasing and I think the most evident area where such transformation must take place will be in increasing the asset base of black fund managers. I want to reiterate that I expect both the board and the exco to stay away from politics. I'm not saying they are involved in politics, but politics is the responsibility of the shareholder. And the shareholder has that duty to, to insulate them so that the board and the um, exco 
remain seized with their professional responsibilities for which they have been brought on board. It's very important that we should depoliticize our state-owned companies and ensure that they are run as businesses and, 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 and nothing else. In instances where you've had a lot of political attention drawn towards chairs of boards and CEOs, we need to, we need to do away with that so that these companies can remain as companies and run as they ought to be run. Again, I wish to reassure all our pension holders that the PIC will continue to be responsible with their assets. We will continue to work together as this leadership, as a united front, both to protect those assets as well as to increase their value. And so, they need to trust us. So live visuals coming from the finance minister, Malusi Gigaba, briefing the media on the urgent meeting with the PIC board that he had to allay fears of uh, any possible damage that could have been caused by the articles. But just very, very important, stating that uh, the National Treasury has not required PIC to provide them with a 100 billion rand bailout for state-owned enterprises. We'll have to leave it there for now. SA decides, rather ANC decides, is up next with my colleague um, Fundo Mabalane. Do stay tuned. This is ANN7.